All right, so in a second, I'm gonna read to you guys something, a comment that I got from a particular viewer that really touched my heart and I thought I need to answer this in video format. I know I've done a whole series on the, these videos over the last two years, but this kid, man, it just, it, it, it hurt my heart to hear his comment and I thought I gotta, I gotta help him out any way I can. So this video is gonna be about him. Let's get on with the comment. All right, so this comment came from Ryan Iskey. I think he said he was 26 years old. So here we go. Hi, Mike. Five weeks ago, I had the exact same flexor tendon injury slash surgery to my right pinky finger that you had a couple of years ago. Literally identical to a T. It's been without a doubt probably the most hardest challenge of my life so far and I just wanted you to know how much the videos on your experience has helped me get through this physiologically. I think he meant psychologically because that's a big part of this too. There's a very small community of people out there that have gone through this kind of thing but to stumble upon a fun and engaging YouTube vlogger, see his world be flipped upside down one day and then get to watch step by step your journey to recovery has honestly been 10 times more valuable to me than any other research I could do. I am sure you get this a lot now from flexor tendon repair people, but really, thank you. So I'll try to be short and sweet with this, but really I was hoping you could answer two important questions I have. Number one, very similar to your passion for gardening and plants, a very strong passion in my life is the game of golf. Since this injury happened to me, it's been my number one fear and concern. How am I going to grip a golf club now? Dude, I totally get it, man. Just the thought of never being able to play again truly terrifies me. As I go through this physical therapy process, it's the number one goal that I want to achieve. So I'm not sure if you'll ever, so I'm not sure if you'll even have an answer for it, but it's worth a shot to ask you anyway for your opinion. To this day, can you play? Did you ever golf before your injury happened? Did you ever golf after? Was it difficult to relearn your grip? Thinking back to how your hand pinky was before compared to how it is now, years later, do you think that something like gripping or swinging a golf club will be very hard to come back from? Man, as I was reading this, I was just like, it was taking me right back to that moment, to that time in my life. If you're not a golfer at all, totally understand, then maybe compare it to swinging a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm not a golfer. I hate to break that one to you. Do you think you could swing a bat today with the same effectiveness that you could before your flexor tendon injury? I honestly am just beyond curious to hear about anyone else's experience with this as I'm still in the early stages. Finally get my splint off next week. Woohoo! Anyway, sorry for the long post, but any feedback that you have for me on how difficult you think it will be to come back and be able to play golf, I would be eternally grateful. Then he went on to say, number two. Any advice you have on the PT, stretches, exercise part, a.k.a. what's the best way for me to try and get this dang scar tissue swelling down as fast as possible? Heat, ice, both. Really just any advice or anything you wish you could, ha you could have told yourself when you were five weeks post-surgery, looking back at it. Any wisdom you have to share, I'd be forever thankful. Anyone on to say, a short video of your grip would honestly mean the absolute world to me. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Thank you, and please, don't feel like you need to rush or anything through. Just whenever you find spare time, don't forget about the 26-year-old kid on Facebook who is scared to death about how his hand is going to work for the rest of his life. I can hear the desperation in this kid's voice. Hope you can see where I'm coming from. Thanks, Mike. You're a blessing. Well, man, it makes me kind of want to tear up here, Ryan, reading this because... Unless you've been through something like this, man, it's hard to understand how rough something like this is on your psyche, how hard this is to comprehend in your brain, but I totally, totally understand where you're coming from, man, and I feel your pain. It is not an easy thing to go through, so I feel absolutely 
compelled and obliged to help you out as much as possible. I'm going to stop this here or else this camera is going to start making my what's coming out of my mouth mix up with what is going on in the actual picture and then we'll restart it. All right, Ryan. So first of all, let's try to help you out and answer some of these questions. So first of all, I, I do want to say that unfortunately <laughs> or maybe fortunately, you're never going to be the same again. The finger is never going to work the way it used to work. And I hate to break that news to you, man, but it's, it's, it's like up in the 90s percentile certainty. Yes, I'm sure there are people out there who have had these injuries and they've had surgery and things have gone back 90% the way they were or maybe even 95% of the way they were, but just the hard cold truth of the fact is when you have somebody cut open the tissues in your body it creates a lot of scar tissue and the fingers are notorious for being very difficult parts of the body to work on because they are so small and the structures in there are so small and the pinky is the worst obviously of all of them because it's such a small structure so when I was at your point in the recovery, I didn't understand this and I was madder than hell that it wasn't healing and working in the way that I wanted it to heal and work. And so I totally understand where you're coming from. This is a completely psychological thing to get through and figure out, but the faster you can come to terms with and I didn't start healing mentally until I came to terms with this as well, you're never going to be the same. The pinky's never going to work the same as it did originally. And until I came to terms with that, until I finally realized that this is the way it was going to be, I struggled. I struggled emotionally. Now, whoever's watching this out there who's never had this injury is probably watching this and going, quit being such a baby you're just talking about a pinky but until something like this happens to you you won't understand it it's very difficult and I totally understand you Ryan because I've been there man I feel for you but you're you lose the ability to do something that you've been able to do your whole life and it's frustrating especially for a young guy like you Ryan because you're wondering how this is going to affect your golfing ability and I know that like you probably played golf through high school and you probably still play golf to this day it sounds like and it's a passion of yours and you are desperate for answers at five weeks post-surgery so here's the deal coming to terms with the fact that it's never going to be the same again you're five weeks post-surgery you're looking at this hand and you're saying it's swollen as heck it feels like there's tons of scar tissue. Is the swelling ever going to go down? Am I ever going to have strength in my hand again? I'm going to go back in my mind to that point in time and try to help you walk through this. And then I'm going to try and show you how my grip looks with a baseball bat. It's the closest thing I've got to a golf club, but I will say that uh, I don't golf. I have never golfed other than one time with a group of friends and my brother right after I got out of the Navy, probably it's been like 20 years now or close to it, and we had more fun riding golf carts around the greenery than we did actually hitting the golf ball with a club. I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I beat up the lawn more than I did hit golf balls. <laughs> so I'll do my best to show you what this looks like. Um, back to where I was at, at five weeks post-surgery. I was in a bad place, man. And I know you kind of joked around in that comment you made and some of it can be funny looking back on it, but in the moment, five weeks post-surgery, I was angry. I was angry. I was angry at the surgeon. I was angry at everybody around me who didn't understand me. It was, I don't know, everybody's gonna handle things like this differently. Some people will handle them better than others, but I was very frustrated at the fact that I could not do what I previously could do with my finger. That coupled with the fact that, like you said, my passion is plants. I went through an entire summer not able to do what I needed to do around my property and working with plants. It was very limited, and my hand as a whole, I, I love to lift weights too. And I had to end all weightlifting, like exercising. I've been doing, I've been weightlifting weights since I was like 14 years old. And it's a big part of who I am. I love lifting weights. 
And so it, I've been doing it that long. It was hard to just give it up for a period of time. It was very frustrating and very difficult to deal with emotionally and mentally. And uh, so I get where you're at with that. Um, I, I will say, I should just stop and say right now before I go any further, you will golf again. And you never know, man. Maybe it'll make you a better golfer. But you will golf again. And you will golf to the same level that you golfed leading up to this and be able to improve on your golfing. This finger will not stop you. The only thing that will stop you is you and your own mental capacity and what you believe that you can do. I, I, should, I just thought of this. I recently watched a documentary on Netflix. I think they took it off of Netflix now, but I can't even remember what it was called, but it was about a young guy that was into rock climbing and he was trying to climb uh, a certain face of, what is that mountain called? Half Dome? I think it's Half Dome in Yosemite. And nobody had ever climbed the specific face of Half Dome and free climb. And he finally did it. Anyway, I'll let you go find the video. I can't remember. I wish I knew what it was called. I'll try it. I'll put it down here in the somewhere in writing if I can find it after I make this. But um, if you go watch, that's really inspiring because he actually, well, I, I won't give it away. He had an injury, a bad injury, and then persisted to push through it and did something nobody had ever done in this world. But I won't ruin it for you. But you will golf again, okay? Right now, at five weeks post-surgery, you're frustrated, you're angry, you know, you went into surgery thinking this was gonna fix your problem, and it's not fixing your problem, your pinky's not working the way it should, and your finger's really swollen, you've got tons of scar tissue, it hurts and aches all the time, you don't have strength in your hand, you wonder if that strength will ever come back again, I totally get it, that's where I was at, I was madder than hell. And nobody could help me, including my wife and kids. The only person that could help me was me. I had to come out here into this hoop house and sit down. It was summertime, the weather was warm, and I'd just sit in this chair and I would try to quiet my mind. And I would just come to terms. I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't try to come to terms with anything. I'd just quiet my mind and I would just try to not think of anything. And I would relax and meditate and try to just calm myself down. And it wasn't until I could finally calm myself down that I realized, finally, over a long enough period of time, days, weeks, I don't know, that it was never going to be the same again. All right, let's, let's move on from that. Once the scar tissue finally, or not the scar tissue, but the finger finally healed, the, the actual incision finally healed to a point where I was, I got to the point where the doctor was having me actually w do a lot more exercises. I think it was at you know, I was doing the physical therapy all along, but I think it was at six weeks when they finally said, okay, they let you loose and they're like, okay, you can do anything with your hand, except we don't want you doing a lot of strength stuff. Like they didn't want me doing pull-ups. They didn't want me lifting any weights or holding anything really heavy with my hand, but they said you can use active range of motion. Like in the beginning, they just want passive. So they don't want you using muscles in your body to bend your hand. They want, or to bend your finger. They want you passively using this hand to bend it because they don't want you pulling the tendon apart. At six weeks, they say, go for it. Just start actively using it. Well, at six weeks, when I started actively using it, that's when I discovered the finger does not work. The end of the finger, and I've showed that in other videos. And to this day, two years later, the end of the finger is still dead. It does, it just doesn't work, man. And it was hard to come to terms with. In the beginning, like I said, I was madder than hell that I couldn't, I couldn't fully close that finger in, and I thought it's really going to inhibit me in life. Two years later, a little over two years later, it doesn't inhibit anything in my life. It's a little frustrating at times, but not that often. 90% of the time, 95% of the time, I don't even think about it. I just go about life and do my thing. Um, that six weeks to 12 week point, that, that second six week period when they said, go ahead and start using your hand, that was, that was very difficult because it wouldn't work and it took me that whole six weeks to come to terms with it. Once that six weeks was up and I hit the 12 week point, 
my hand was still a little swollen. I still had a lot of swelling in that pinky for a period of time, but they told me I could start lifting weights at that point. From the time I started lifting weights at 12 weeks out until, I don't know, it took about a month, I was back up to my strength levels again. I just started going for it. I was, I was mad, I didn't care, the thing didn't work anyway, and I said, to hell with it, I'm just gonna start working my hand. And I started lifting weights hard, and I was back up to my, almost up to my regular strength level again. So about a month, it didn't take that long. Dexterity was a different story. Writing was difficult at first because the pinky didn't curl all the way in like it normally does when you hold a pencil. And so it kind of got in the way of me, cur show that to you, kind of got in the way of me curling my finger in and, and getting it, the you know, get holding a pencil or a pen the way I normally would. And so my writing was a little funny at first, but it took not that long, probably a couple weeks time, maybe a month time, once I went back to work of writing to kind of work out those kinks. And now it's not a problem at all. I don't even think about when I'm writing. It's not a problem, but it took a couple weeks to work those kinks out. It's, it's minor, it sounds little, but it was a thing. Other thing, I went back to work. I've told you before, I'm a nurse. I'm constantly drawing up syringes that was a frustration. I, I hold the cap of the syringe with this pinky and then and then I would use this hand to kind of to push to push down on the plunger of the syringe and it took some time. It took some adjustment to figure out how to do that because it was goofy. I couldn't bend this end of my finger in and you don't realize how much you need that finger until you start using it. But it took some time. Let's speed forward. All those little kinks and bugs were worked out within a month. So like you know, if at 12 weeks I was done with all the therapy and everything and my finger was going to be whatever it was going to be, it, that's at about 12 weeks. And then I just let loose and started lifting weights, went back to work and did everything I normally did. I'd say it took a month to adjust to all those little quirks I was just talking about. Once those quirks were adjusted to, no problem. Um, still a little frustrating, but I, I just finally gave up the... Whatever anger I was holding on to and just said, this is it, man. This is it for life. I just, I'm just going to have to deal with it. You know, this is it. And so things got better from there. And it took about a month to get through the quirks. Um, that first winter, man, that sucker was really sore. It, you know, the cold would affect everything. Right now, I'm a little over two years and now we're into winter. I'm in December right now. It's been about two and a half years. And I'm in freezing cold right now outside. And doesn't really bother it at all only if I'm outside for long periods of time it's it's getting a lot better the swelling will go down it's gonna take a month or so after you get going active again um, that first year is really tender and painful and then as you get around through another summer it starts getting easier the second year is cold is a little tender but not as bad now I don't really have a problem with it at all it that finger hurt for the first year though it was sore the whole finger hurt the scar tissue has never gone away. The scar tissue has always been there. The scar tissue is probably never going to go away. It softens a little bit over time, but it's always there. I hate to say that to you. It's just the scar tissue is always there, man. It's never going to go away. And once again, your finger is never going to be the same again. Let's, let's do something uh, to show you real quick about me holding a baseball bat. And maybe you can try and figure out if this is going to work for you. Although I know it will, you'll be golfing again. All right, so I got my baseball bat here. I'm gonna try and bring this down for you. And this is the closest thing I got to a golf club, man. Actually, let's let's try to let's try to show you real quick, right here. Is that where's my pinky? There's my pinky. So that that's the pinky that's jacked up. You can see it right now. I can't straighten the thing, but let's see how that looks. The one thing you will notice, or that you will <laughs> kind of see is, I can hold on to that baseball bat. I can hold on to a lot of things. I mean, I got that thing all the way out there. It doesn't affect that. I can feel the tension on the pinky, but it doesn't affect my grip at all. I got a strong grip. I can grab anything that I could grab. You know, I've got dexterity. It's not, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect any of that. One thing I did notice is that my, my ring finger strengthened up and became kind of took some of the slack of the pinky, um, but the pinky still grips and holds on to things. It just can't bend in. That's the problem. Here's the deal. I, I think I think a golf club is a little thinner than this. I don't know, but uh, 
when I bring it around, how can I show that to you? When I bring it around, it grips. It just doesn't curl down as much, but it doesn't affect anything. The other finger behind it picks up the slack. And when you're holding a golf club, let's try to bring this down. When you're holding a golf club, you are, there, am I in the camera? When you're holding a golf club, you're using both hands anyway, and if it's your right pinky, it's in the middle of all these other fingers and your other hand. So I really don't think it's gonna affect your golf swing, man, at all. Especially once you build your strength back up and get your dexterity and all that figured out. It's gonna take some time. You're not gonna be hitting the golf, the, you know, what do they call that place? The, the, the golf thing, whatever it's called. You're not gonna be hitting it um, and just being a pro right off the bat. It's gonna take some time, but not that long, you know? In that first year, it's going to be sore, but you can grip, man. You can grip just fine. I mean, I, I could swing a baseball bat and not skip a beat, not even think about it. So, does that help? Does that show you what you want to see? Here, let's see if we can... There's that pinky. Let's see. I grip that thing. I grip that bat hard. Not any less hard than I could before. It grips fine. The only, the only thing this really affects... Now this is this is a while after this injury happened for me. It's going to take a little while for you, but the only thing it affects is I can't I can't curl it all the way under. I can't get it uh, as I showed you there. See that? that pinky still the end sticks out. When I try to make it real tight, the end of the pinky doesn't curl in. That's the only thing it affects. But if whatever you're holding has any kind of, you know, I mean a, a golf club's a little thinner than that, but it's it's not it's gonna be fine buddy you're gonna be just fine I don't know what else to say you're gonna be golfing like a pro here soon and you never know maybe this is one of those fluke things where all of a sudden it improves your swing this minute degree and you become the next Tiger Woods or Arnold Palmer isn't he a famous golfer anyway all right, so hopefully that helps you. I can grab that bat, swing it, play baseball with anybody. I don't know about golfing. I'm sure it's the exact same thing, but the grip overall is fine. It's not an issue at all. So don't worry about that, buddy. Now let's try to answer number two. So you're at five weeks and you're wondering, what can I do right now at five weeks post-surgery to help ensure my odds of having my finger work properly? Well, I think... Uh, I've thought long and hard about this. What would I tell myself? Um, a lot of things, but most of those things are not going to help you. Probably all those things are just not going to help you at this point. If I could have told myself anything different, I wouldn't have had the surgery to begin with because it didn't really help anyway. In the long run, it cost me $5,000 and uh, 12 weeks off of work. So it was kind of a, the whole thing was kind of a big you know foo bar and uh didn't really didn't really have a good outcome in the end <laughs> so if i could do it all over knowing what i know now i would have gone to the er like i did after i cut myself let them sew it up and then just gone home and gone back to work the next week that's what i would have done knowing what i know now but i didn't i went and had surgery um the only other thing I would have told myself, which it's too late for you now, is knowing what I know now that it wasn't going to heal right anyway and that I was satisfied with not having that tendon intact anyway, um, I would have immediately after surgery ripped that dang cast off that they put on my hand and started actively performing range of motion from day one after surgery and taking the chance that that tendon would re-rupture because it doesn't work anyway. What's the point? But it's all hindsight. You don't know until you go through something like this. I'm not, I'm not making any recommendation. That is not a medical recommendation. I'm not your doctor. You should follow your doctor's advice, but that's what I would do Knowing what I know now, given the same situation, day one after surgery, actively moving that finger so that the tendon can glide in 
scar tissue doesn't start adhering because scar tissue starts forming within days of the surgery. And that tendon can get glued down really quickly. Five weeks out, man, that's tough, buddy. I, you know, I just hope that you can actively move it now. Um, whatever amount of movement you've got at about the six week point, they say you can get it a little further through a lot of physical therapy and forcefully trying to, and I did a lot of that. I was forcefully actively trying to block the pinky and push it and move it in, in, until it hurt. Um, probably lucky I didn't re-rupture the tendon, which doesn't really matter anyway, but, uh, I, I would just say, you know, actively use that finger. At six weeks, if that's what your doctor tells you to, actively as much as you can work that thing and get as much range of motion as you can because at 12 weeks, they say it's pretty well set in. It's going to do whatever it's going to do and you're not going to regain anything from there unless you have another surgery, which I don't recommend. <laughs> but that's, I'm not your doc, so you got to go with his advice and whatever you want to do. As far as taking care of it in regard to ice and heat, you asked about those things. I would say, I didn't learn this with this finger, which is kind of odd. I learned it with this injury. I don't know if you saw that video, but I actually, <laughs> as luck would have it, uh, about six months ago or eight months ago or something like that, last spring, I ruptured the A2 pulley in this finger. And so this finger's all funky and doesn't work quite right doesn't have the strength but it's all healed up now and my grip's fine but i learned this with this hand was the ice and then the heat and the ice and the heat so one thing you can do and it helps heal and it helps heal faster it won't help with your range of motion but it will help the healing process is to submerge your hand when the doctor allow tells you you can submerge your hand in ice ice water and do that i think it's like five or ten minutes you can look it up online but and let that blood the, the blood vessels will constrict and push all the blood and fluid out of that finger and then you put it in hot water or i put it in as hot water as i could stand without burning myself and then it opens up those blood vessels and allows fresh new blood and nutrients to rush into that area i did that with this hand and it seemed like it helped heal a lot faster once i started doing that a lot of uh, sports doctors recommend that for, I mean, you look at like football, you know, after a game, they jump into an ice bath. And so ice and heat can be very helpful in the healing process and getting things healing up faster, but it won't help with your range of motion. You're going to have to do the exercises continually, trying to keep that finger actively moving as much as possible. The other thing I did a lot in the beginning that they recommended even before the five weeks it, from the first week on after they took the cast off was they said one big problem is people end up with their finger hooked in a lot which mine does i can't straighten it all the way but it's because they have to shorten that tendon to sew it back together they cut a little edge off to get a clean edge and then sew it back together and uh so one of the things they said to work on is to straighten your finger so I, I worked hard. When I had my hand like this for like six weeks. They wanted me to keep it in this position in a splint. But I would just work to keep that finger straight as possible and stretch it out. And so that's one thing you can do so that when you get to the end, it's not like curled up too tight when you got your hand opened up. The last and final thing I would say is count your blessings, man. I know it sucks right now and it's hard. It's not easy, but count your blessings. Um, when I was in therapy and you might have seen something like this too, I ran across a guy who was sitting at the table right next to me. We were at the same table in two separate chairs with two separate therapists and we got to talking and man, this guy had been hit by a train and all three of the fingers on this, I think it was his right hand, all and it was his dominant hand, all three of these fingers were so jacked up that they were all curled in like this when he extended his hand he couldn't extend them past this that was it and so he had to physically push them up but they were permanently stuck like that and he was in all this therapy trying to get his hand to work again and so all i would say is just count your blessings that it was just a pinky and uh i know it sucks but you know there's going to be other troubles in life you're 26 years old but uh Try to just keep your head up, stay positive, and finally know that you will be golfing again. I hope that helped, man. 
Uh, I know it was a long one, but uh, that's it. That one was for you, Ryan. So hope it helped. Work hard. Try your best to stay positive, and uh, you got this, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>